seen showing off missiles built by his country and banned by the rest of the world to Russian and Chinese leaders. Russia's Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu accompanied Kim Jong-un to a defense exhibition that featured the North's banned ballistic missiles as the neighbors pledged to boost ties, according to the North Korean state media. The Russian minister and a Chinese delegation led by a Communist Party Politburo member arrived in North Korea this week for the 70th anniversary of the end of the Korean War, celebrated in North Korea as Victory Day. The nuclear-capable missiles were banned under UN Security Council resolutions, adopted with Russian and Chinese support. But today they provided a striking backdrop for a show of solidarity by three countries that are united by their rivalry with the United States and a revival of what some analysts see as their Cold War era coalition. This is the first visit by a Russian defense minister to North Korea since the collapse of the Soviet Union. For North Korea, the arrival of the Russian and Chinese delegations marks its first major opening up to the world since the COVID-19 pandemic. Shoigu gave Kim a letter from Russian President Vladimir Putin, according to the North Korean media. Kim thanked Putin for sending the military delegation led by Shoigu, saying the visit had deepened the strategic and traditional ties between North Korea and Russia. The North Korean media reported that Kim expressed his views on issues of mutual concern in the struggle to safeguard the sovereignty, development and interests of the two countries from the high-handed and arbitrary practices of the imperialists and to realize international justice and peace. He repeatedly expressed belief that the Russian army and people would achieve big success in the struggle for building a powerful country. While there was no mention of the Ukraine war, North Korea's defense minister, Kang Sun Nam, was reported as saying North Korea fully supported Russia's battle for justice and to protect its sovereignty. Kim Jong-un led uh, Sergei Shoigu on a tour of an exhibition of new weapons and military equipment. State media photographs showed Kim and his guests at a display of some of the North's ballistic missiles in multi-axle transporter launchers. Another image showed what analysts said appeared to be a new drone. One analyst said Shoigu's inspection of the North Korean missiles visit suggested Russian acceptance of North Korea's nuclear program. Ankit Panda of the US-based Carnegie Endowment for International Peace has termed the tour remarkable. He says, We've come a long way from when North Korea would avoid showing off its nuclear capabilities when senior foreign dignitaries from Russia and China were in town. The personal tour for Shoigu and Shoigu's willingness to be photographed with Kim in the course of this tour is evidence that Moscow is complacent with North Korea's ongoing nuclear modernization. Kim also met Chinese Communist Party Politburo member Li Hongzong for talks and was handed a letter from Chinese President Xi Jinping. The visit by Li's delegation shows Xi's commitment to attach great importance to the DPRK-China friendship. Kim was quoted as saying, referring to the North as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. State media photographs showed Kim at a large flashy performance flanked by Shoigu and Li with a backdrop that included a slogan used by the Chinese army during the Korean War vowing to resist U.S. aggressors. The Russian visit raises the prospect of more open support for North Korea, especially with Russia isolated by the West over its invasion of Ukraine. Artyom Lukin, a professor at Russia's Far Eastern Federal University, says simultaneous visits to Pyongyang of high-ranking officials from both Moscow and Beijing is another sign of a revival of the Russian-Chinese-North Korean coalition that originally existed in the late 1940s and 1950s, though now it is likely to be led by Beijing rather than by Moscow. Shoigu's appearance at the military expo exhibition exhibiting the ICBMs is a very ambivalent gesture given that Russia stays formally committed to the UN Security Council resolutions banning North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. He said, adding, it may signify that the current geopolitical circumstances are 
starting to erode Russia's long-standing interest in preserving the global non-proliferation regime. Last year, North Korea codified a new expansive nuclear law, declaring its status as a nuclear-armed state irreversible. This month, the North threatened nuclear retaliation over a show of force by the United States, saying the deployment of strategic military assets near the Korean Peninsula could meet criteria for its use of nuclear weapons. Reactions to these high-profile visits to Pyongyang have been coming in. South Korea's foreign ministry has said it had been Russia's official position to oppose North Korea's nuclear program and therefore it hopes that the visit by the Russian defense minister and uh, the delegation led by him would help the North return to the path of dialogue. Meanwhile, the White House national security spokesperson John Kirby said Russia's overtures to North Korea come as the Kremlin struggles to procure arms. Kirby said it is no secret that Putin is reaching out to other countries for help and support in fighting his war in Ukraine. And that includes, we know, some outreach to the DPRK. North Korea has backed the Kremlin over its war with Ukraine and has shipped weapons, including infantry, rockets and missiles, in support of Russia's war, said the White House. North Korea and Russia deny that they have conducted any such arms transactions. All right, time for us to take another quick break here on uh, Global Lens, but don't go away. We have lots more for you on the other side.